It feels like forever since we've done one of these, doesn't it, ladies and gentlemen? Hello again, and welcome to this. This is another episode of 10 years ago. Now, tonight, we're going to be looking at a very interesting show, which, of course, was the last ever WCW pay-per-view from March 2001, ladies and gentlemen. This one is WCW Greed. Now, of course, this is another one that I've never seen before, so I was very interested going into this one because I wanted to see if WCW went out with a bang or whether they went out with a whimper. Shall we find out which one of those that they did? The buy rate for this one, a truly laughable 0 0.10. <laughs> very, 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 very poor. Proving that at the end, really, no one cared about WCW at all. Really, no one. So, the opener was Jason Jack defeating Quee Wee in a good opener. Quee Wee's such a stupid name, isn't it? It really is. And he looks like he's trying to be slightly too hot. You know, his hair is up here, for example, and spiked upwards. Anyway, match starts on the outside with Jet hitting a super kick and a nice tope. Inside, a leg drop gets two. An inverted Boston Crab, which is like the uh, Billy Goat's curse is it that uh, Colt Banner does and an elbow get two we come back with the hair toss to the outside but then misses a suicide dive and it looks terrible has to be said if it's an intentional miss I'm sure you can get away with it but it honestly looks like a botch it really does um, beautiful handspring DDT off the apron by Jet if you've never seen one of these let me explain how this one goes yeah he does a handspring so that he's up with you imagine Jason Jet's got his head on the, on the apron here yeah and basically, if you can imagine it, he does a handspring elbow, so he's up like that, and then grabs Jason Jet's head and DDT him. And it's just stunning. It's so he's not like that on the apron. I'm sorry, he's like this. He's got his back against the apron. It's just such a beautiful move. It really is nice. Inside, Jet gets two off a standing moonsault. We uh, sends Jeff over the turnbuckle and takes a manly bump. He literally launches him. Imagine the corner. Yeah, launches him over the corner. So he lands back first on the outside. Nasty, nasty bump. I like that one. They brawl on the outside for a while, including Jeff eating railing. Jeff is Jet, idiot. Jet eating railing. Inside, we get to third press. The fans chant um, that Queewee sucks. So he becomes angry Alan Funk and heals it up something fierce. With a chin lock, yes, must be a heel because he's got the rest. Hold on, <laughs> he hits a vertical suplex. They go up top. Jet tries a power bomb off the top, but it's cowered into a runner in midair. Beautiful stuff, to be sure. Um, beautiful tilt wheel face buster by Wee gets two. He tries a power drive, but Jet goes low in front of the referee, who does well. Let's be honest, nothing about it. Why does that happen in WCW. Why are you allowed to use a low blow and there's no DQ? It makes no sense. It really does. He hits a handspring elbow sunset flip by We gets two as does a Northern Light suplex. They collide in the ring so Jet, this is so clever. I love this. Jet feigns unconsciousness and he sort of, you know, before he does it, he plays up to the crowd and says, you know, go along with this, go along with this. Uh, Queewee naturally falls for it, goes up top, tries to do an elbow drop, you know, Jet obviously moves out of the way and hits a, uh, what's his match finishing move? A crash landing for the win at 12.15. Crash landing, yeah, gets you in a suplex position, launches you up and then basically spins you in midair. So you come down on your bike. Nasty move. Um, yeah, this to me is a three and a quarter star match. Great, great opener. It's unfortunate, really, because you know, Jet seems to be on a bit of a push. But, of course, the company wouldn't exist three weeks later, so that, that's got us so, up. Um, if you want to, I've put the link in the description box to this match. But, be warned, ladies and gentlemen, the match is good. The match is very good. The commentary is in German. If you can get round the German commentary, it's all good. Anyway, speaking of all good, we then go on to the next match. Um, do, only WCW could do something like this, I'm sure. It, maybe TNA would like to try this when they go out of business. But WCW decided in its infinite wisdom, we're going to create some new belts. <laughs> so they created the Cruiserweight Tag Team Championship. Yes, a couple of weeks before they go out of business. Isn't that genius? So in this one, this, there, was a, there was a tournament... Um, you know, and this was the finals of it. Interesting note before I go on is that one of the teams that um, one of the guys that was in one of the teams was the one AJ Styles. He was in WCW at this time. Anyway, the finals were Elite Skipper and Kid Romeo defeating Rey Mysterio and Billy Kidman in a great match. This is a four star match, in my opinion, to win the Cruiserweight Tag Team Championships. As mentioned, genius idea this one. Creating new belts a month before the company goes out of business. So Romeo and Kidman start with Kidman hitting a nice head scissors and a release um, powerbomb. 
uh, skipper in and a nice double team move gets two. Kidman with a runner, then Ray with a guillotine leg drop. And Kidman holds skipper. That's a nice little touch. Head scissors by Ray to the outside. Uh, so Kidman and skipper brawl. Romeo and Ray um, join in. The heels end up next to the stage. So Ray, basically, they end up, you know, you got the entrance ramp, you got Ray. Uh, you got Romeo and Skipper next to the ramp. So Ray and Kidman sort of look at each other and go, right, watch this. And they both launch themselves at um, at the heels. Uh, Kidman does a cross body while Ray does um, does a senton, if I remember rightly. Because all it says here is hit, they hit stereo moves on them. You know, it's like, good one there, Mark. Quickly you notes that it doesn't really help at all, does it? Ha, 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 ha. It's a beautiful spring day. That's why I'm opening the window. It's such a nice day today. It really is. The sun's shining. Not a cloud in the sky. It's beautiful. It really is. Anyway, so yeah, maybe I should put more effort into my notes. And, uh, in the ring, a double bomb by the faces. Gets two for Kidman. It's not a double. That's the thing. It's not a double bomb. I've just remembered. It's a double choke slam. I'm sure. Of, oh, I don't know. Anyway. <laughs> Um, but then Kidman starts to play face in peril, including taking a nice face buster and the obligatory heel chin lock. <laughs> Front suplex gets two for Romeo. Skipper tries a superplex, but Kidman counters into a sit-out powerbomb. Hot tag to Ray, who owns, including a nice DDT and a lovely spot where... Oh, this is so nice, right? You've got Romeo in the ring, yeah, on his back, and you've got Skipper on the outside, yeah? Ray does a swanton bomb off the top onto onto Romeo, yeah, and then basically rolls through with it and continues running and does a suicide dive through the ropes. Beautiful little move. Really like that one. Um, Romeo with a plancher, then Kidman uses a shooting star press to the outside and all three men. Sunset flip gets two for Ray, as does an uh, inverted suplex by Kidman. Tiger suplex by Skipper, who holds him in the bridge, so Romeo, who is the legal man, can hear a leg drop off the top. That gets two. Beautiful little spot. I really, really like that. That's really clever. Ray bounces, um, sorry. Ray bombs Romeo, so Kidman splashes him for two. Bronco Buster, which is a stupid fucking move. Ray, Ray goes to Moonsault. Yeah, lovely, lovely finish. Really like this one. Does a, basically hits a lion salt, yeah? Tries to do a lion salt. Romeo, Kid Romeo, catches him in midair and snow piles him for the win. You're like, well, that's just genius. Yeah, this is a four star match, ladies and gentlemen. In my humble opinion, two great matches to start off the show. Once again, if you can handle the German commentary, the link to that match is also in the description. I'd love to know what you thought of those two openers. But of course, this is a WCW show, and of course, hey, can't have a, you, know, you can't have good opening matches like that without having some utter, utter, utter shite. So in the next match, it was Sean Stacey defeating Bam Bam Bigelow in an awful match. Now let me tell you, I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid. I'm going to save you the time of telling you what happened in this one. The only thing of note in this one, yeah, the only thing is when Stacey Keebler, who's out with Sean Stacey, yeah, pulls a bottle of perfume out, chucked it to Sean, distracts the referee, Sean squirts it in Bam Bam Willow's face, and a net breaker gets the win. That is the match. Yeah, that's the highlight of this woeful match. It's a dud match. Next, Lance Storm and Mike Orson defeating Conan and Hugh Morris in a one star match. So, um,. Big lariat by Orson to start. Storm and Hugh exchange chops before Hugh sets, uh, gets two off. Nice power slam. The heels work over Morris, who plays face in peril. Hot tag to Conan, who doesn't hit one move. Not one. Not one move before he gets taken out. Yeah, This hot tag means nothing. <laughs> so Conan then plays the face he's in peril. Uh, Orson hits a splash for two. You know, he gets a tag. But the re yeah, well, Conan plays face in peril for ages. Gets the tag, but the referee doesn't see it, so he goes back to playing face in peril just that bit more. Um, including a pile driver from Awesome. Stone goes up top but misses whatever it was he was going to attempt to do. I don't, it's one of those spots that doesn't make any sense. He goes up top, comes off, and basically eats boot. You know, Conan sticks his leg up, yeah? But it's like, so what were you planning on doing there? You know, that twice this happens on this show. Both times, I don't get it. I really, really don't. Anyway, hot tag to Morris to no reaction whatsoever. Not really a hot tag at all then, is it? Is that all right? Let's move that down just a little. Let's move it down just a touch. Anyway, uh, he, his hot tag lasts a little longer. He's able to hit a pair of avalanches, but then eats a super click and a splash by Awesome. German by Morris, but then a moonsault is countered into a running Awesome bomb for the win at 11 minutes and 10 seconds. The match was crap. And I'll tell you what this match was, yeah? This was an extended squash. 
It really was. It was Lance Storm and Mike Awesome battering them. Absolutely battering them. And of course, you know, in a storm, in a normal tag match, the faces will one of the faces will get a hot tag, clean house, and the faces win. No, that doesn't happen here. At each Tanker there. Is that better? Marvin's better, isn't it? It's a tanker. Anyway, yeah, so the hot tags that Morris and Kid and not Kim and Conan got were completely ineffective. They did nothing at all. So uh, yeah, that's sort of all for money really. Next though, we got another good match. As Shane Helms defeated Charbo Guerrero in a good match to win the Cruiserweight Championship. So, these two had a three and a half star match back in January at Sin. I'm sure you remember my review. So yeah, can they measure up to it? So, long headlock sequence to start where Charbo's got the head got a headlock on. And any time that Shane counters out of it, he puts another one on. It was quite an interesting little thing. But then they do a really nice wrestling sequence to redeem themselves. Larry by Charbo. He tries to ability back suplex, but Shane counters into a gut wrench suplex. T-bone suplex and an STF, which is more like a regal stretch. Now I think about it, by Charbo. And an in the bridging Indian deathlock is really nice. Belly to back suplex by Charbo gets two, as does a DDT. Pump handle suplex gets two. They then go outside with a nice sequence um, it leads into a tope that gets two as they go back in. Shane starts a comeback with a face buster and a neck breaker. Superkick gets two. Another misses and Charbo hits a curtain call for two. The Tornado DT by Charbo is counted into a nightmare on Helm Street for two. Frog splash to the floor and a cross body in the ring. It's not a frog splash, it's a frog cross body, if you can call it that, if that makes sense. Um... In the sorry, frog splash to the floor and a crossbody in the ring gets two for Shane. He goes up top again, but Charbo crotches him. Super belly to back suplex counters, so Charbo tries a vertebraker, but Shane counters into his vertebraker for the win and the championship at 13 minutes and 55 seconds. It's a good match. It's a what? What we're giving it? We're giving it three stars. It's a good match. A three star match. It is a good match, but it's not as good as the match that they had at Sin. I'm sorry, I'm far too hot. I have to tolerate the. Uh, oh no, it's not making as much noise now. The random tanker. Why is it making so much noise? Don't get it. Anyway, and then match of the night for Dem. No, no, it's not really, is it? A uh, Sean O'Hare defeated Chuck Palumbo and Lex Luger defeated. Sorry, Sean O'Hare and Chuck Palumbo defeated Lex Luger and Buff Bowell in an awful match to retain the tag team championship. So, I'm sure many of you have heard of this match because it's quite funny. So what can we say, right? The entrance, if you include Lex's terrible promo, the entrances take just size, just shy, just shy, just shy of six minutes, all right? This match, and I swear this is true because I counted it myself, this match takes 56 seconds. And this consists of this, yeah? Chuck Palumbo hits a super kick on both men. Sean O'Hare hits a Sean Tom bomb on Buff. Sean Tom bomb on Lex. One, two, three. And that's the match. Now, I have heard on the underground grapevine that this match happened this way because Lex Luger kicked off when he was told, you will be jobbing. Uh, on this, this show, you do the job to, to, Lex, um, to uh, Chuck Palumbo and Sean O'Hare. Lex Luger cried like a little baby. So... The book has said, right, here's your choice. You either go out and lose, or you're going to go out and lose it like this. And for some reason, it went down like this. So, yeah. And but now, also, what you need to think about is that this was WCW's last ever pay-per-view. A bulletin or a memo had been sent out to the various, you know, to the wrestlers. And there's all the staff actually saying, you know, after this show, you know, the, the, after, you know WCW is going on hiatus, basically. You know, and we don't know when the next show is going to be. So realistically, these guys must have known that this was going to be their last ever pay-per-view appearance. Neither one, you know, but well, both got hired by the WWF, but you know, did nothing of note other than lose to Booker's on Raw. I mean, the, the whole invasion angle was changed. Lex Luger was never going to be hired by Five Vince after what he did in 995. So, you know, this was their last pay-per-view appearance. And I can't, you know, just... It just makes me smile that you know, they did this. Like, we've got the power, we've got the creative control in our contracts, but 
we're dicks basically. We're not prepared to put people over. We're not prepared to put the up and comers you know, over. So we're gonna get booked to look like complete jobbers. <laughs> That's funny. Anyway, yeah. Unfortunately, this was you know, the rest of the, the rest of the show isn't very good, I'm afraid. As the cat defeated Canyon in a meh match. Back and forth at the start of this one, Cat connects with an electric chair drop, a drop kick, and a pole bomb. After a brief brawl on the outside, Canyon takes over with a lariat off the top for two. A nice springboard, springboard elbow gets two, as does a top rope rocker dropper. But um, he then puts on a bloody sleeper to make the match go down just that little bit. Cat suplexes out of it and hits a neck breaker for. Um, no, sorry. Cat suplexes out of it. Neck breaker gets two for Canyon. He goes up top and gets crotched. Superplex gets two for Cat, as does a big kick. Canyon uses to rope to get, to get a three count, but the referee sees it and goes, oh, no, 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 no. Match restarts. So away we go again. Canyon reverses a power driver into a Boston Crab. That's a nice little spot. Feline, feline out of nowhere gets two as Canyon gets his foot on the ropes. Canyon reverses suplex for two. Ref gets bumped. Miss Jones, who of course is out with the cat as always, uh, gets involved but gets uh, he nails she nails cat by mistake. But then she nails Canyon. Feline gets the win. Nothing special at all. Canyon attacks both of them after the belt and then some guy called Smoo. No idea who that is. I'm afraid makes the save. This match is star. Star and a half, if you're very nice. Bloody sirens, I'm trying to do a bit here! God damn it. Really god damn it. Anyway, so speaking of key matches, neck match, I'm sorry, I don't want anyone go for to you. Um Booker T defeats Rick Steiner in a crap match to win the United States title. See if you can spot the running theme in this one. <laughs> Brawl to in the in the crowd to start. Inside a style line gets two, as does a tiger driver. Booker T fights back, but wrote Rick won't sell at all and walks on a surfboard stretch. Booker gets a suplex that Steiner doesn't sell, so Rick hits a belly to belly for two. Sw uh, Sunset Flip gets two for Booker. Again, Rick Rick doesn't sell and hits a clothesline and a chin bloody fucking lock. Bloody chin wants to do me in. Booker with an axe kick and a flapjack. Ref gets bumped to Steiner, doesn't sell. German by Steiner. Shane Douglas attacks uh, Steiner with a with a, a bit of the cast. Yeah, I think um yeah, Rick Steiner defeated Shane Douglas for the United States title. Shane Douglas come out, he's got a cast in his hand, whacks Rick Steiner with it. Bookend for the win. What was the running theme? That's right. Rick Steiner sold nothing at all in this match. Anything that Booker did, Rick would just wouldn't sell at all so yep that's that quarter of a star because i'm very nice two to go dusty Rhodes and dustin rose defeated rick flair and jeff jarrett in a crap kiss my ass match this has bad written all over it in my opinion a kiss my ass match with you know rick flair dusty rose dustin rose just jeff jarrett it's going to be rubbish, isn't it? Major league stall at the start, including the referee ejecting Road Warrior. And all, Dustin pounds on Jeff Jarrett, including posting him. No blade job, unfortunately. Uh, he goes up top, but then misses whatever he was going for. In, in the exact same spot that happened in the Team Canada match. You know, he goes up top, comes down, eats boot. It's like, well, what were you going to do? You know, you've come off the top, like, say for example, he's going to do an axe handle, yeah, he goes off the top, and he goes, oh no, he's got his foot, I'm not going to try and do the axe handle, I'm going to make my face hit the boot, poof, doesn't make sense, it really doesn't make sense, it gets on my nerves, ah, anyway, ah, uh. Flair in the crowd don't give a shit because they only have eyes for one man. That is Dusty Rhodes. They're chanting Dusty. They want Dusty. When Dusty tags in, the place goes mental. He unloads with the usual, you know, the usual offense. You know what Dusty's like. Dustin and he cleans house briefly as a Flair low blow stops him and they, he plays Rhodes in peril. <laughs> After a while, he gets a backslide for two. Jeff Jarrett with a figure four. Dustin breaks it and hits a belly to back suplex and hot tags Dusty. Elbows for everyone. Oh, yes. Dusty comes in with the usual offense he'd just done before. But it's, you know, the crowd are going mental. Dustin back in and the heels go low and attempt stereo figure fours, but it doesn't work as Dustin rolls up flat for the win. This was shite. It really was, but it was entertaining at the same time. The crowd made this match. The crowd was so into anything that Dusty did that I've given it one star because I'm nice. Now, anyway, bear me a second. Sorry, I'm, I'm really thirsty. I'm going to have some Del Monte.
That's good stuff. Can see where my girlfriend buys it. Next, we're going to fight the main event. As Stott Strand defeated DDP in an OK match to retain the WCW title. So, DDP starts off with a neck break and falls two. He falls with a lariat off the top. They brawl into the crowd where they find a kid or a, a, you know, a teenager who's on crutches and naturally the crutches are stolen. Crutches are used by Steiner, but then DDP starts a little bit of a comeback, looks over to the guy, and you know, you know like this, and the guy chucks his cr other crutch over, starts wailing fucking Steiner with it. I like that. Table set up, Steiner's put on it, DDP gets on one of the rails, elbows off it, that's a nice little moment. Um, they head to ringside where various sh weapon shots get various two counts. Did I mention this is a full count anywhere match? I probably should have done, shouldn't I? This is a full count anywhere match. <laughs> Um, into the ring, Steiner controls with a T-Bone suplex and a bear hook. Paige tries to come back but walks into another T-Bone suplex and a belly-to-belly -belly suplex. Paige gets a DDT and a lariat. Steiner uses the ropes for two DDT by Paige and then a DDT by Steiner. Diamond cutter by Paige, obviously, but Rick Steiner pulls the referee out. Paige isn't happy about this and he basically hits a plancher, you know, springboard plancher onto Rick, which is really nice. As the, but the, what do the fans think? The fans don't give a fuck. They fans, the fans, the fans chant Goldberg. Of course they do. Of course they do. Ref gets bumped. Start using the belt. And Paige does a manly blade job. Um, I need to point out that I went and rewound this. Because I was like, when did he blade then? And what he actually does is the referee gets bumped. And um, basically Paige then does the blade job. Stands up and gets hit with the belt. Because when he goes down, he's already bleeding. And you're like, ah, cool. Anyway. Yeah, it's a manly blade job. They do the WrestleMania 13 finish with a Boston Crab instead of a Sharpshooter. And they do it. The mannerisms are identical to Austin's. Literally identical. But the big difference is Paige gets the ropes. Uh, Stein recliner. And again, Paige gets the ropes. So Stock gets out his foam pipe and starts battering Paige with it. Puts on the recliner again. And that's enough for Paige. And uh, yeah, that's that. Match was okay, but it was nothing special. It's a two-star match because I'm a very, very generous kind of guy. Let me tell you about this one. There were three Cruiserweight matches on this show, and they were all very, very good. The main event was okay, but everything else was shite and should be avoided at all costs. So, it's another one that's very hard to judge because my gut instinct is to give it 3 out of 10. But, I'm in a good mood. It's spring, the sun's shining, like I say. You know, and th those, th those three matches were very, very entertaining matches. So, you know, I'm going to give this one 4 out of 10. Ladies and gentlemen, if you want me to, I will review the last Nitro, but you've got to tell me down here if you want me to, all right? Ladies and gentlemen, I've been Mark P. This has been 10 years ago, and do you know, the next episode of 10 years ago is going to be a fucking good one. Why? Because the next episode of 10 years ago will be WrestleMania 17. Oh, yes, I'm already looking forward to it, and I know that you are too. I've been Mark P. Take it easy, guys.